Greetings everyone, my name is Altarian and welcome to Hakuoki, the second episode where we were returning to... The very next day I've returned to the outskirts of Edo, in order to allocate my older place of residence. A bed of overgrowth weeds covered the yard, giving me the impression that it was left undisturbed for some time now. If I had to hazard a guess, Father's study would be the best place to look for clues about the water of life. Huh? As I crept inside the musty room, I saw what looked to be like a moving shadow, and I was startled. Oh no! Did I just stumble upon a robbery? I nervously held my breath with my back against the wall, peeking slightly around the corner to see... Who is there? Who is there? A familiar voice called out from the room. Could it be? No, there was no way he could possibly be mistaken that voice. It was... Father, is that you? My heart suddenly sank into my chest as I called out to whom I assumed to be my father. The floor creaked ominously as the shadow approached me with slow, measured footsteps. After he stepped into the light, I saw him myself. It was... Shizuru. Shizuru. My child, it has been a while. My, my. And how beautiful you have grown. There stood my own flesh and blood. A wave of nostalgia crashed over me. Father! I ran up to him instinctively, hugging his body tight for the first time in years. A faint smell of chemicals wafted from his clothes, a scent with which I was immediately familiar. <laughs> It is quite odd. What is he doing here now? What is the what is the goal? What is he doing? Let me see your face, my dear. It seems like ages since we've last met, and what a gorgeous young woman you've become. Yes. I was so overcome with feelings and tears began to form uncontrollably in my eyes. His warm, worldly hand reached out and pat my head tenderly. Such a kind, familiar sensation. Suddenly I was thrust back to my childhood, lost in the illusion that the years since I'd lost my father were all dreamt while I slept cozily in my futon. Father, where have you been this whole time? His hands stopped, they were gently petty. His smile, however, was as bright as ever. It was a smile I knew well. His lip moved with purpose as he spoke. I was under the protection of a certain domain. But enough about me. Tell me about your life. What has kept you busy? I... As he desired, I told my father everything about my travels to Kyoto. Up until the current moment. I was under the watchful eye of the Shin Shinsengumi, and all about what I had seen in their company. I will witness the crushing be uh, defeat of the Battle of Toba Fushimi, and our, and our subsequent retreat to Edo. Hmm. Ah, I see, my child. You have been through quite a series of ordeals, haven't you? No, no, not at all. But I cut myself off before I could continue. Because I was recounting my stories of Kyoto to him, I suddenly remembered that all that Sen and Kazuma had told me. Princess Sen, one of the demons whom the protagonist had met in Kyoto. She serves as the head of the Yeis clan and often goes by the name Sen. If I were to ask father about those things, then I was afraid of hearing such rumors to be true. In all honesty, I was, uh, I was deathly afraid. The silence was deafening after I stopped speaking. It was my father who broke the silence. Shizuru. Shizuru. While you were traveling through Kyoto, did you happen to meet anyone who believed themselves to be demons? This question cut directly to the point I had hoped so desperately to avoid. And I stared back at him intently. After a pause, I nodded, despite my reservations. Yes, I did. In my travels, I encountered three men who claimed to be demons, 
Kazuma. Amarigi. And Shiranui. Oh. And there is a princess as well, Sen. Naruhodo. I see. Dewa. So it's likely then that you've already been informed by them. You see, I am not your real father. His sudden confession rendered me speechless. This man wasn't my real father. The adoptive father of the protagonist, who although a member of the Yu Kimura clan, isn't related to her by blood. For what is worth, I've always looked at you as if you were my real daughter. Yeah. Rather, I raised you more preciously than I ever could a true daughter. The reason being. The stone suddenly dropped, losing all pretense and a sense of darkness from within. Feeling something to be off, I looked at him quietly. What I saw was his unusual stern expression, but it was colored with that different differently than I was used to. The reason being, you are to become Lord Kazama's wife. You are precious because together we will restore our clan to glory, a legacy to be shared with your children. Father, Lord Kazama's wife? Did my ears deceive me? Did Father just refer to me as Lord Kazama's wife? At first I believed myself to be speaking to my father, but now this person to whom I was speaking seemed to be someone else entirely. Had Father always smirked so creepily? Soon war will consume this country. The Tokugawa, the Tokugawa Shinigate will disintegrate to dust, and Japan will engulf in this discord and fire. As the humans. As the human race tears itself apart, the demon shall rise once more and reclaim this country. It is for his purpose that you were born. Mad madness burned in father's eyes as he made this grand proclamation. At this moment I was reminded of something. There was a question I had asked him at the beginning of our unanticipated reunion. Father, where have you been all this time? Silence. A silence so thick I could hear my heartbeat. Father slipped curled into a malicious grin before he muttered under his breath. I told you already been under protection of a certain domain. Someone the domain that is certain to rule this country once the Tokugawa Shonigate crumbles at last, the Satsuma Domain. A domain governed by the opposite daimyo named Shimazu. Initially, they supported imperial unification but eventually allied with the Shosu Domain and others like minded men in the interest of removing the Shogunate. <gasps> A haunted chill shot down the length of my spine, and I backed away steadily from my father. This man, this was not my father. He may look like him, I was as sure of what had happened to him since, but I knew this much, he was a changed man. Now come child! You will serve as Lord Kazuma's bride, who is destined to be the ruler of the new demon kingdom. No! I hastily pushed father aside and I sprinted through the exit of the house. I have no escape, I have to escape by any means necessary. Whatever happened to change my father was still unknown to me. At the moment I had no inclination to believe that he could possibly entertain a rational conversation. Until then, I'll have to return to headquarters. Just then. I might say, 
this escalated very quickly from chill. Oh, it's not chill. They just came back. They just fled from a war a month back. So the action still got, but I mean, kind of overwhelmed now. There you are, Shizuru. Mm, there are no need to behave so potentially. Ah, uh, how? From what I remember, he was far behind me instead of the house. How in the world could you just appear? Better than children deserve their punishment. What? Father's eyes flashed a brilliant shade of gold. What's going on? Now you're going to come with me, Shizuru. Together we'll forge a new world with Lord Kazama. Something sharp began to split from beneath Father's forehead. It was the same inhuman horn that I had seen emerge from Amagiri's forehead all time ago. What? I was still in the disbelief what I was seeing. Unworldly was the only word I could conjure. Everything else, it seemed, was useless. <laughs> this horn does not make you feel uncomfortable, does it? <laughs> Though I suppose I could not blame you. It's a pity that although demon blood courses through my veins, my strength, my strength is pale. In comparison to Lord Kazama's. I've become so dangerous from the human world that my body has regressed from its true potential. However, thanks to the water of life, my body has successfully revigorated its demonic power. What you say? Quite a dashing look, I would say. Water of life. Don't tell me you, in my ears, weren't playing tricks on me. The father truly drank from the water of life of his own accord. Enough! Join me, Chizuru. And with you beside me, we shall forge a new paradise befitting all demons with Lord Kazuma. Father, who by this point barely resembled himself, let alone a human, Snatch at my wrist. No! I made a feeble attempt to sweat his hand away, but he was so much stronger from, from, from me to reject. Somebody! Please help anybody! Yukimura! Sono mama fusero! Yukimura, duck! That voice. I ducked reflexively, just as I was told. And I heard the chilling sound of flesh being split open by the cold hiss of steel. <laughs> but, uh... My father's eyes widened angrily, and he re ran coarsely, turned his back to see his attacker. Behind him stood. <laughs> Samurai Soto, two on his side. Tell me, why have you left the compounds without permission? Saito, where? Why are you here? Edo de Anta ga ikisou na basho to ieba, koko igai ni aru mai. I expected this to be the only location with an Edo to which you could reasonably go to. Saito stared back at me sternly, shaking his head before turning to face my father. Anta wa sagatte iru. Stay back. Kodo san to. I shall deal with Kodo. But ii kara sagatte iru. I will not repeat myself. The stone stung harshly. And without questioning, I stepped back, as he suggested. Alakud was... Would he be alright? Saito possessed the strength and ability of a fury, but this... But this battle... Would take place in sunlight. How boring is to interrupt an interunion of between father and daughter. Father let out languid... Languid? Sighed before clutching what sounded like metal in his pocket. Then a silver twinkle glimmered in his hand was a handful of scalps. The father fit them between each of his knuckles and he began to shout manically. 
落ち水によって手に入れた鬼の力存分に試させてもらおうではないか As you wish! A perfect opportunity for you to marvel at my wondrous abilities obtained via the water of life. Oh, he threw them! As his voice bellowed loudly, Father shifted his feet into a fighting stance before whipping eight scalpels towards Saito. <coughs> Each scalpel. Oh, he looks cool. Each scalpel was easily deflected by Saito with a swift flick of his katana. Then. Saito darted closely around my father to slash his exposed shoulders. Both shoulders spewed ribbons of crimson blood that spreaded across the bed of weeds below. A display of gruesome I needed to cover my eyes. Despite my feelings regarding my father's discretion, deception about my relationship, he was still a man who raised me, a father whom I loved nonetheless. But now that he had become a fury, these wounds merely thickened his flesh before they immediately began to seal. If I hadn't drunk the water of life, I would likely be withering on the floor in agony. Nice battle. So you intend to continue? Our difference in power is incomparable. Just as Sato had said, no matter what power father had gained, he had no background in swordsmanship, which meant that his newfound strengths would only take him so far. Father, however, gave no indication that he was willing to, to, to relent so soon. Are you surprised? The man destined to rule this country. What reason have I to feel the likes of you, human? Father choked despicably. As if drunk from his own power, and then he hurled more scalpels. Scalpels at Saito. Foolish. Nice. Once again, Saito paired the flying scalpels. Just then, one scalpel in particular bounced off the tip of Saito's sword and ricocheted to pierce the chest of my father. Crimson blood spattered over Saito's clothing, the metallic sting of which hit his in my nostril. <laughs> Being showered by a morbid shower of blood made Saito's face crunch in pain. Suddenly Saito's movement became strained, as if he were out of breath, and he glanced in sweat. Oh no! Oh yeah! What happened? Oh my, what's the matter? Your moves have lost some of their luster compared to the spry you were earlier. I would not expect you to be the type to tire so quickly with such elementary moves. Which can only mean... The father's lips smacked mischievously. <coughs> I watched Saito winched wearily. Then he quickly covered his nose with the sleeve of his kimono. There was no mistake, it was... <laughs> I see! I see! You've become a fairy too, that's right! Another evil laugh echoed from father's booming voice, and he drove a scalpel into his right arm. Blood began to ooze slowly from the stabbed wound. He's stabbing himself! <coughs> Although he himself had sustained no injuries, Saito clutched at his body with a rapt facial expression. What now? You're quite thirsty for good, are you not? Does it not intrigue you to learn just how warm, how succulent the taste of blood can be? <coughs> with each heavy breath, Saito stepped backwards. Hoping to distance himself from father's blood. However, the scent had already done its work, and temptation had already begun to tickle into Saito's frame of mind. His fingers could barely keep the grasp on the katana, which shook nervously. Like father said, Saito seemed exhausted, and his moves reflected that. He couldn't subdue father like this. 
It's something the matter, you do not look like yourself. Father smirked with glee, glancing at sight of the and another scalpel before throwing it. It's hitting him with strength. Solas, whatever of existed, was taken to the sight of speedy healing abilities, but it did little to soothe the sharp knob of the well aimed stab wound. Ah, yeah, Saito is getting the full load. Saito is getting the full load, guys. Saito winked at a stick. Vicious streams of blood formed around his wound. Mastering whoever willpower he had, Saito dug his heels into the ground, pointing his blade at father. Battling under direct sunlight was enough of an ur arduous task for Saito, as the harsh rays burned the surface of Saito's pale skin. But Saito preserved all bite desperately to fight. Where did such inspiration and strength come from? Quite foolish to drink the water of life, especially as a meek little human. It's not so surprised that humans are pitifully fragile compared to us demons. Even with your temporary edge gained by the serum, your mind will submit to its depraved instinct soon. And then finally you will be little no more than a beast whose sole purpose is to prey on innocent humans. I commend you for choosing such a distasteful path, however foolish it may be. No. So, what would become of Saito? If all was father stated, was Saito destined to become a wretched monster that feeds on the weak and helpless? Ah, uh, what do you think? Tragical, terrible tragic. Don't you agree? Imagine it must be destroying you inside. Now that you've consumed the serum, your life as a human is forfeit. No longer will you be able to enjoy the trivial pleasures befitting a sad lives of humans. My life is of none of your concern. Never have a wish for peace. The first lesson in crossing swords is to embrace death openly. If fear, too, were embraced as such, then the path of the swords would have been long since abandoned. Just how long do you expect to keep this charade? Very well. I suppose it's time to put your theory to the test. Father drew another scalpel from his sleeve pocket. Keep faith and cheat my cadetcher. Ah! Our lovely Saito will do it by itself, I'm pretty, pretty sure. If I were to act rashly, I would only serve as a determined to Saito. For now, I could only keep faith in it, but of course, you need to let the samurai fight for his honor. But then, a sudden visitor chimed in. Mate Kodo. Kodo, wait. Hmm? What? From the distance came a voice that startled father, freezing him in place. I knew this voice, it was. Why are you here, old man? Have I not told you that time and time again not to act without permission? Lord Amagiri. Return at once. If Kazuma discovered that you fitted the displays, then there will be surely be consequences for you to suffer. However, that man over there has drunk the water of life and became a fury. I believe it be for the utmost importance to handle him. Lest he became a nuisance for us in the future. It is best for us to finish him here while we can. 
I'm here only under direct orders of Kazuma to escort you back. However, I will repeat myself once more, return. Amagirito was biting, and he glanced sharply at Saito, who had still been panting in quick breaths. Whatever or not if it is of our accord, this man will likely fall victim to his condition soon enough. Because he's a human, because he is a fury. And besides, Kodo, if it comes to Kazuma's attention that you have needlessly provoked your daughter, I doubt he will show you any mercy, even if you raised her. <laughs> Rather continue. Rather contem contemptuously, father gazed at Amagaris as if on the cusp of sharp resort, but he said nothing. Eventually, Amagari nodded, and the two of them vanished like smoke into the mist. Saito let a heavy sigh, showing himself relief, showing relief as he sheathed the sword back into the scarab. Saito, are you alright? Worry not, especially your reason for leaving the compounds. Um, if it were not me who came here, but rather Kazuma, there is no doubt that you would have been taken. For what reason do you believe I maintain my vigilance, even during daylight hours? Uh, Sato Stone was cold, and I felt myself covered nervously from his implicit questioning. I apologize for causing you trouble. Unnecessary. Instead of apologizing, explain to me your reasoning, please. Well, at first I contemplated how best to tell Saito, but I came here to Reese to search for clues on how to suppress the side effects that come with the Fury transformation. Why? Had Sanan directed an order for you to research? No. It's just you looked like you have been suffering such pain sight, and I wanted to help. Did I? His response came unexpectedly to Saito. That was a good sound, I guess. Fred no longer, I feel no pain. But you just now you look like you were in pain. My father blood sprayed on your under. If what you suggest were true, to what end is it of any of your business? It has everything to do with me. I mean, the reason you even have been suffering the consequence of being a fury is because of me. I consciously tapped my kadachi tied to my hip. If I recall correctly, as you were leaving Osaka, I to pr purposefully handed my kadachi back to me. He indicated that if I were to use my sword with intent, that I would have his respect. But now all Saito could bear to do around me was to avoid my line of sight. The compounds are currently unattended. Your business here is finished, I presume. Let us return. Oh, I returned to get one last look at my childhood home, but afraid to cause even more trouble, I rushed to follow up behind Saito, who already began to saunter away. Just then... <coughs> Saito! Saito collapsed on his knees, and I sprinted to him worried. No, 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 no. Nice. In, in, enough. No. If I remain like this, this will pass soon. No. All of the color of Saito's face began to drain. In fact, he looked the furthest thing from fine. Sweat dripped from what seemed like every pore in his body, and his pupils to delay twice their size. He must need... You... you need blood, don't you? Are you having an episode right now? Saito spit out a word of saliva, refusing to f at first to confirm what I suspected. With stained movement, he began to clutch his breast tightly as a method of dealing with the pain. I had never seen Saito in a condition such as this. If I were remain... If we remained in the open, there was no telling who may stumble upon the two of us. 
Hurriedly, I grabbed Saito's arm and led him to the refuge of her house. What should I do? Oh, make him endure? No, not make him endure. Medicine is last resort. Give blood. In all these stories about giving blood and transforming, enduring it mostly gives worse. But since this is some kind of princess or some kind of pure blood woman, if we give him our blood, means he'll become superhero strong. It's pretty sure what's going to do is give him blood. Heiske suggested the best way to cope with the symptoms was by drinking human blood. There was no time to dwell. I unsheathed my kadachi, sliding the gold edge of the metal across the tip of my finger. Slowly, thick crimson droplets began to slide from the length of my fingers before landing to the wooden floor. It immediately offered my bloody finger to Saito, who had watched me sheepishly cut my own self. Saito, please drink my blood! Saito gave no reaction at first, and his brow furrowed as if he was wrestling with silent deliberation. Don't worry about this cut, I'm a demon! The flesh will seal itself no- <gasps> So she is a demon. But, if you don't drink my blood, then you'll only be going to feel worse. Please don't think of me, please. I watched Saito mind work as I urged him to drink. And finally, he eagerly grabbed a hold of my hand. He hesitantly put its soft lips against the open cut, sipping slowly at first, before sips turned into deep gullops. His Adam's apple bounced rhythmically as he sucked with more force and then his breathing calmed. Eventually, without a sound, he pulled his wet mouth from a wrinkly fingertip. See, you look far better. I'm happy that you took the chance. Seto's cheeks blushed, and he scurried off the side to avoid making eye contact. Your finger, does it hurt? Nope. It's already sealed back up, you see? I suppose having my powers comes in handy from time to time. There was a pause, and Saito scratched his head tepidly, thinking a way to respond. Motorzo. Time to make our leave. He deliberately, he delivered his suggestion curtly before stepping out. I knew that he just couldn't help himself, but I was, uh, I was understandable. T it was understandable to think that drinking another person's blood was something to which he uh, still required some adjustment. Of course, there was no better way to treat those awful symptoms, so I couldn't blame at all. Saito and I had safely returned back to our base, and this is where we will end the episode, my friends. We've got a nice... I know, the story is really tense. Really everything is happening. Well, I guess if you're in time of war, and in time of um, turmoil and chaos and change of political regiment, Regimes or regiments? What's the correct word? I don't know. Um, yeah, every single day could be chaos, death, ends, such nations. But, well, at least now we know that Our Lady is a demon. And that one of the clans, a certain Kazuma, wants to marry her. It's probably a demon as well. And they want to restore the demon nation. Cool. Cool. I like it so far. Quite enjoyable. I love the romance. There is a little... Uh, it's a nice game. I kind of know why people, uh, why there are so many games over some people like it. Yeah, yeah. Excited for next episode. As always, thank you much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, drop a comment down below, my friends, and I will see you in the next episode. Have a good day, everyone.